new on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. The debauchery rolls on. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and... Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight, see how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember... It didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today. And our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Fiddlesticks! What, Wilbur? We just got hit and I think my back has all been out of shape. You gotta talk with those whippersnappers at the Advocates Law Firm. They're the best injury lawyers around. What? Pop down, Clarence! Abner's telling me about the lawyers and the advocates. So what happened to you, Abner? I was walking across the street with the light when some young punk came screeching around the corner. I lost a toe. What? Shut it, Clarence! If you get injured, the advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. New Year's dietary resolutions are coming up with uh, Ted's meat and potatoes and recommendations on how you can uh, eat a little better. First time for a few emails, though, from The Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. So, so, guys, my birthday uh, lands on January 2nd, which means you are on vacation every single year for my birthday. So, much like Ted Smith, I can never have a men's room birthday wish. I've listened to you guys since 1904. I know the rules for birthday wishes, and I don't expect you to change them for me. However, what I'm asking is if you could at least tell me you cannot wish me a happy birthday because it's not my actual birthday. Cheers, guys. That from Dax. Dax, you can't do that either. But you got a sad trombone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, Dax. Mm -hmm. Guys, a friend of mine, Alec Poff, turns 21 years old today. He's from Everett, Washington, listens to the men's room religiously. It would mean the world for him to get a birthday shout-out from you guys. Thanks, guys. That from Courtney, who requests that your penis is too small. Because... Guys, Jack Jack is 27 today. He's obsessed with your show and makes me listen to it now. I love you, Jack. That from Allie. Allie says, give me your penis is too small. Guys, my uh, man Jeremy Bradley turns 34 today. He would love to hear the dirty Germans uh, talk about being a narcissist. Uh, Love you forever, guys. That from uh, Chillykins. Yeah, I'm definitely a narcissist. I like to stare at my reflection from the sweat glistening off of your butt cheeks. Yeah, it's like he's a narcissist. It's so much easier to have sex with us, and they always like it rough. Yeah. Rough. Yeah, she spends her whole day getting pretty, only to get dirty at night. <laughs> well, guys, it is what it is. Happy 54th birthday to me. Love you bunches. Uh, one, maybe a little <laughs> bit more. wonder who she loves more. Christine. It's her birthday. Oh, uh, that's uh, from the lovely Christine, your Dodge Parts delivery professional. How about some uh, dirty Germans wishing her a very happy 54th birthday? Yeah, you say Dodge Parts. I imagine I will not be dodging any of your parts tonight. Yes, yes, you won't be dodging this part. 
That's how does it work? Just strap it in the engine. So Ma- Miles, her lady parts has the engine. Oh, yeah. I'm She's going to get the uh, Dodge Ram tonight. She says, I love one of you guys a little bit more. I'm just wondering who that would be. See, I don't ask questions you don't want answers to. Because it's just not you. You had a Dodge, didn't you? You had a Chrysler? <laughs> oh, it was a Chevrolet, wasn't it? Miles, don't insult me on the air, man. Why? What's wrong with a Chrysler or Dodge? I thought you had like a Charger. Haven't you seen Calvin peeing on it? Oh, you had a uh, Camaro. I had a Chevy, yes. Yeah, you had a Camaro. My the finest of all American I'm automobiles. <laughs> I mean, I think you know what kind of car he you had. You're just... I knew, it was a, I knew it was a big ass muscle car. I just assumed it was one of those Dodge Chargers or whatever it was. Guys, you no, please get one, the Camaro. Yeah, would you get my uh, husband a birthday <laughs> shout out uh, with a big old bong hit for his 59th birthday? That from Mindy, who does not mention her husband's name, but he's uh, 59 years. It's old. Mindy's husband, you know, yeah. Mindy's husband, exactly. Hi right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaz, a dirty German's brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, <laughs> Schweinefly. Thank you, Bob. A couple extra emails here. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, after running through all the shows of 2020, including going through the podcast at double speed to catch up after falling behind three months, oh, uh, thanks, work. I have finally completed the 2020 dump button total. Oh, so, mm, okay. For the final number of 2020, any idea how many total dumps we had on the show? Uh, I guess 30. Oh, it's got to be higher. I'll say 75. 94. Oh, damn. Oh. That is an increase of four from 2018 2019. The total FCC fines avoided for 2020 was $30,550,000. I hope the company is happy that we saved them that much money. Your running total of estimating savings is now at 373100000 As always, the dumps do not include Ted versus the FCC. Of course. Or any of that. Uh, guys, two things stood out this year. As for the first time ever, you had to drop callers four times in a single show twice. I believe we dropped three today. Mm-hmm. Three dumps today. Highest recorded number previously was three, which happened in 2018. Uh, the second thing was that whoever controls the button now has a very itchy trigger finger <laughs> as the number of false starts increased by 200% since Robin departed. Wow. Whoa. Boy, we're slacking there. Uh, keep doing what Good you work, do. Mike. Uh, thanks for helping all the listeners get through the hell that was 2020. That from Kyle, the unofficial statistician of the men's room. Uh, a couple of those here. <laughs> What's that? It's just one of those things. Like I always tell Mike, like when I ran the board, like you'd rather just dump it, and not have him curse than no. get it wrong. Sometimes you even go like, man, they said ship, right? Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your just, finger's on the button. It's, it's already pressed. Get rid right, of it. I can't explain to people the pressure. Like It's not a constant pressure, but like you get close to a curse word, you're running that board like, boom. Yeah. Everyone's reaction yeah. in here is it's just so quick. Uh, gentlemen, as far as rules growing up, uh, growing up, we had one rule with my father. When he walked in the door from work, no one was to speak to him for at least five minutes. <laughs> That he's in the door. If you did, there was hell to pay. I didn't understand it at the time, but as an adult now with kids, I totally understand why this was a rule. Rock on. That from JC. That is not a bad rule. It's not, but in my home, it's impossible. It's the moment I walk in, my daughter comes flying toward me. The dog's already there. It's like, mm-hmm. right, it yeah. just is what it is. Yeah. I've struggled with that just dating girls. It's like the moment you walk in the house? Yeah. And, right. Well, it depends. You know, I said this to Miles yesterday. The difference is this. If I'm greeted by my daughter, which I am, as soon as I walk in the door, it's daddy, I love you. How is your day? Right. So no matter what your mood is, it kind of elevates you. Yeah. And even if she had a bad day, you know, you, you like being a parent and all that. It's different with the wife. You know, you get home. She's like, Are you the one who did empty the dishes? It's a press release. Did you? It's, right, it's, you know it's, it's a mean? press it's conference. Like, and you're, ask, you're answering like 60 questions <laughs> in rapid fire succession for like two minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, right, like when I walk home at night, like I don't. Sometimes I don't even answer the phone. I'm just like, right. let me just walk home. Like, you yeah, just want a couple minutes. minutes. Give me a second. Shut breathe. your brain down. Yeah, that's all. Cards <laughs> here. As far as uh, a random question, question we had on Monday, Ola, gentlemen, uh, the most memorable thing I ever got for Christmas ah. is a Milwaukee Bucks leather jacket signed by Sam Cassell, Glenn Robinson, and former Supersonic Ray Allen and Coach George Carl. Damn, nice. What a treasure that for the rest of my life. That from uh, from Alex. Oh, uh, what else we got? Uh, bitches, I'm catching up on the podcast, radio.com. I want to chat about a few things. First up is F1. Ted wants to go to a race, and I believe he said he has a friend in Hong Kong. 
Uh, I think he's in Shanghai now. Okay. okay. I would recommend going to the Singapore night race and don't Ooh. actually buy a ticket, but go to the bars around the track and watch it on the TVs while hearing the cars 100 feet from you on the street. Uh, much better views and cheaper. Now on to Cincinnati Chili. You guys are killing me with how little you know about Cincinnati Chili. I was born in Cincinnati. Suck it, Thrill. <laughs> <laughs> and their chili is like meat gravy. The best way to eat it is on uh, a coney. What's you take your bun. On a hot dog. Put yellow mustard, then diced white onion, then the hot dog on top. Then you overflow it with chili, and you add a big handful of grated mild cheddar on top. Best way to have it, and you can buy the season packet from uh, Skyline Chili Online. You just made my mouth water. That sounds... Do you think you picked that up, or is that a fork and knife hot dog? That is a fork and knife hot dog. When All you right. slather it in chili, absolutely. Yeah. Time to open wide and sample Ted's meat and potatoes. Now, here's your host, head chef of the men's room. The Ted Nugent. Thank you, folks. Thank you. So a lot of people this time of year, obviously, I mean, it's the time of year to do it, uh, make uh, resolutions, New Year's, mm -hmm. this and that. It's almost become more of a cliche. I don't know if as many people do it. Actually, that's a lie. I know plenty of people that are doing it right, right. now. Right. Whether it's dry January well, what I heard yesterday, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, but they were like, well, a lot of us are going to do dry January. We're going to wait. Yeah. I said, like, hey, everyone gets it. Go ahead and have yourself a beverage. Right. For a lot of people, <laughs> yeah. For a lot of people, it's going to be, you know, they want to lose weight. They want to get in better shape or this or that. Are there ever resolutions? Not ever. But I feel like when someone says I have a New Year's resolution, inevitably, it either deals with alcohol or weight loss, right? Oh, it's well, not I'm, like I'm going to write a book or I'm going to travel more. And I get that we all want to do that stuff, but it is, it's always health related. Yeah, there is some people that do that, though. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know anyone who's given me, told me about a resolution in the last five years where it's been something other than, right? The typical weight loss, diet, stop drinking, well, or it, anything that's about getting healthy, but never like, you know what, man? Your, your diet, your diet's always up to you, but I think it would be easier with all the restaurants kind of just operating to go. Yeah. To some degree, maybe you'll eat a little bit more at home. Well, I think, too, it's just one of those things, like, whoever you are, like, the two weeks around Christmas are just kind of a free-for-all. Yes, so then when you get to January, it's just kind mm -hmm. of a harsh reality of, like, oh, man, we got to reel this back yeah. in. So, I don't know. You're right. It's a very small percentage. But there are some people that are like, i got to be more positive this year. I don't. I, do you I, know, I know I should You be, You but. don't put weight on on those two weeks. Do you, do you put a, an average pound on uh, per that break? <sighs> oh, like... So I'm okay now, but the week in between, I was, uh, yeah, was bad. Okay, because I can fluctuate five to ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, you know what you I'm know saying. What I mean? he just, he just go, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I pooped a lot. <laughs> What's happening? So these are just uh, healthy, like, New Year's resolutions from a, a dietitian. And most of this stuff is stuff you've heard before. And actually, it's very positive stuff, too. Well, sure. Uh, simple things. Like, number one, they're saying try a new uh, plant-based seasonal recipe. Now, look. We're not saying you got to go vegan, but maybe like one day a week, you you just don't eat meat. Just go vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Roast some carrots and Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to do I that, but it sounds burger, like burger. Who knows? Yeah. Right? Big, big potato. But I think for a lot of people, too, it's just a matter, of, like they say here, it's like, just get out of your comfort zone. Right? That's fair. That's fair. Uh, go for the real stuff. They say skip the protein uh, drinks and cleanses and eat real food. You've got teeth and a small intestine. Let your body do the digestion. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Fair right, enough. You, again, January, there's going to be a lot of people. And look, none of all this stuff's going to be a log slog. Sure. Right? Like, you're not, you're not, in one month, you're not going to lose 30 pounds. Nope. And if you did, it's probably some weird cleanse diet that's going to bounce back. Right. So, Fast. Most, right. Most dietitians, that's what they're saying. Like, you just, you know, you'll right. get there. Uh, eat real food. Uh, I like this one. They say think improvement, not perfection, right? So just work on it, and, and you'll get right. there. You can't do it. Rome was not built in a day. Right. And and the all or nothing mentality gets a lot of people in trouble. It does. You know if what I mean? Going, I'm going hardcore. This is what I'm doing. Like, But, but you're not built for that. You know, mentally, you're yeah. not built for that. It's like when Castle first started running. All right, so Castle can run great distances now. But when he first said he was going to run, he's a smoker at the time. And what happened was he got... An endorsement with Subway, I think it was. And Subway was pushing the healthy uh, sandwiches and all this. But also Subway, I believe, was like going to sponsor him to run in some race. And he's looking at me and he's like, honest to God, man, I don't run. But it's now over the airwaves. I got to do this. And to his credit, 
he trained up to do it. But like for the first two weeks, he was miserable. Now, due to run 20 goddamn miles and not even break a sweat. Yeah. Yeah. He I couldn't carry a snare drum, a drum up a set of steps. Right. I mean, he, he was out of shape. He'll be the first to tell you, but basically he got caught up with the fact it's been made public that you're going to do this thing. So he had to train up to do it. Now he can do it. Yeah. Uh, Probably I'll, 10 years straight. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Also on the list, they say, remember, colorful is good. So, you know, vegetables, Fruity fruits. pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit loops. <laughs> Rainbow donuts from Krispy Kreme. Right. Yeah. And Neapolitan. Any, any of that stuff, right? You're going to be like, oh, all right. Uh, eat to serve your body. So basically, try to eat things that will help your body function better instead of harm it. So maybe watching football, don't get Chinese food, and then feel like a piece of crap the next day as it's way too much sodium. Yeah. Did that happen to you on Sunday? Oh, yeah. What did you get? Uh, <laughs> sweet and sour chicken. Good call. And mm-hmm. some very large uh, dumplings. Oh, ooh, that sounds great. It was. <laughs> At three in the morning, my, my intestines were like, what are we doing? <laughs> we are digesting salt. Right. <laughs> uh, think about, again, this is advice from a dietitian. Yeah. Uh, think about what you can eat, not what you can't. Oh, yeah. You know, help I mean? your brain stay a little mm-hmm. more positive. Right. It's I like, can eat this celery. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the truth, though. You know what I mean? Or I can't eat this celery. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you're just focused on I can't eat donuts, I love donuts, I can't eat donuts. Like, guess what? Saturday, you're eating donuts. All you're thinking about is donuts. Right. Yeah. All you're thinking about is donuts. <laughs> well, every time, every time I go to Taco Bell and Soto, I always think to myself: Should I stop by and get you guys uh, a big box of the Krispy Kreme? I said, "We have many donuts." How's that the question? Yes, the answer is yes. The should answer I stop by and get mini yes. donuts? I, no. Okay, yes, right. right. Yes. You know, it's a big ass box of mini donuts. Because here's the thing: if you don't eat them, I will. All right. All right. What kind do you want? Chocolate. That might, that glaze. Needs to go straight. We gotta ice. find a habit that he's trying to cut back on. They just have that sitting around. Who, me? Yeah. 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 yeah, but I don't have any habits. I'm cutting back on. <laughs> All of my habits are bad, but I'm not trying to cut back on any of them. I've said this for many years. If the devil came in one form for me, it's the Krispy Kreme. Those things are like crack. It is crack. Oh, my God. Ted, I'm not just a donut. I'm the devil. If you eat me, I have your soul. And then Robin, like, Robin taught us to uh, put it in the microwave for like 10 seconds. Oh, oh the Krispy Kreme? Jeez, yeah. yeah. What, I know. what a game changer. She was that like, is. just do it. It's yeah. a game changer. My buddy Cobb from The Podcast. Brand yeah. new episode out. Right. Uh, <laughs> he's the same way. He's always like, you got to heat him up. I'm like, bro, all I got is a toaster oven. You're going to burn it. No, you can do it. Just Get him out of there quick. Listen, I'm a junkie, man. I don't have 10 seconds. That thing's in my hand. It's in my mouth. Okay. That's why I never smoked crack. I just did the cocaine. <laughs> Drink the bleach later. Uh, form new healthy habits. And I like they say this, too. They're like, look, this ain't easy. Right? It's going to be hard. Eat, and I like this, too. Like, And this is good coach talk. Like, each day is a new chance. Sure. Right? So, I mean, a lot of this stuff's going to go back to that kind of thinking, too. Like, all right, so, you know, let's say it's tonight. For some reason, you, you, you got some new diet, you're way off it, or you have some new lifestyle, you're way off it. Who knows? Maybe you had a rough day at work, so you, you eat some pizza. All right, well, Friday, you're going to wake up tomorrow. It's a new day. Yeah, new chance. Just don't eat pizza every day. <laughs> it's not that you can't eat things. You just have to do it in moderation. And that's true right. of everything. You know, there, every day there's something you effed up or probably could have done better. Like, don't let it weigh on you, man. Just and your your move, thing move is so weird. I limit myself to like three milkshakes a year. A year? Yeah, like three or four maybe. Now, that's it. Like there's certain Do you li- count the halves of thrills that you steal? No. That's not that's, that's his milkshake, not mine. <laughs> he just said he lives yeah, himself. Me, right. mine, like I want a milk. I always smoke when I drink. Right. Can <laughs> I get one? I'm an alcoholic. Did I see you guys out here yesterday? <laughs> well the other thing too you gotta keep in mind is right. like whether it's drugs or booze, like for a lot of people, food is that. Sure, absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean they could try yeah. over and over. You know, it's like somebody trying to quit drinking over and over. It's like right. They gotta go back. Like it's hard, but mm-hmm. see, that's where these two things can marry. If you're trying to lose weight and food is kind of your poison, start doing drugs because a lot of drugs you're not hungry. I mean, look, you ever seen a fat meth head? Ever, ever? Have you met not a, a fat, fat meth head? I have never. But seen I've a seen fat, fat cokeheads. I've seen some fat. That cokeheads, is weird. But most people aren't flying on coke all the time. I feel like people that do meth are, are pretty much high on meth all the time. Uh, oh, it's a long lasting drug, right? The other, the other things in here are just like, you know, like fill your plate up with more uh, healthy stuff. Don't stress over the meals. And then one of the great ones in here, too, that I, uh, that I like is just be mindful of it. You know, take your time. Enjoy the meal. Mm. Taste the food. Sure, see sure. what you're doing instead of just wolfing it down. That's it. Good Thank luck you. out there. Thank you, Head Chef. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. 
The men's room is in progress. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. All right, coming up in minutes, we'll drink it to us with a shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, a quick check in with Mike Hahn. And some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, two influencer models are fighting because one took the other's name. <laughs> baby. Baby? Baby. My man's baby. It's... There can only be one baby. I guess. I, uh... I mean, I guess I'd be pissed, too. Like, come on, man. Get, do your own thing. Well, and they're in, they're, it says that they're influencer models. So that means that they... I don't know how you can be an influencer and a model at the same time, but there's models that are allowed to have the same name, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, maybe we're blowing this thing up to something that it shouldn't be. I think influencer and model are often the same kind of people. Huh. Right? Because you could be an influencer that just does makeup, or you can be a model. But oftentimes, models will get paid to sell products, which makes them an influencer. Gotcha. There you go. Mm-hmm. Come on, Mike. Get with it, man. Yeah, you know, I thought I had all my terms right. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, we just, if you have a commercial on TV, we just don't think about it that way. Right. You don't think about, you don't call them athlete influencers. Just right. like right. Ryan Reynolds telling you about what, Mint or whatever that is. The new You're cell like phone thing. Press, Prescott telling you about super comfortable beds. Exactly. <laughs> we can help you do that. Influencers. Thieves in France that stole over $400,000 worth of wine threw bottles of it at officers chasing them. That was an expensive uh, way to do battle. That's a haul, yeah. I mean, those bottles were really, really pricey. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. It was worth stealing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Consider just how much wine that you can walk away with and, and actually have it add up to $400,000. That's... That's, that's Benji's that you're dropping with every throw of the bottle. And the funny thing is, you know it's worth a total of $80. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to do this taste test. Like, if your bottle of wine costs about 10 bucks, that's mm-hmm. the one people seem to like most. Mm-hmm. But this is France. Long, long. Two guys were caught stealing a suitcase of meat from a grocery store. <laughs> Su- All right. I don't get it. Yeah. I feel like if you're leaving a grocery store with a suitcase, I'm suspicious. I mean, even if you're like, oh, my plane just landed. Right, but you didn't bring your suitcase into the grocery store for any reason other than, I'm guessing, to steal something. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just me, but like, really, did you bring the suitcase? I just feel like somebody would have seen them packing meat into a suitcase. Maybe that's how they got caught. It's it's not like the meat aisle is all that hidden and protected, or or, Mm -hmm. or rather, yeah, you know what I mean, sheltered. It's right out there in the open. Everybody's there. There's the butcher behind the doggone counter. Sure. You're shoveling meat into a <laughs> doggone suitcase and then rolling it out. I mean, this this is not a quick grab project. You're unzipping the, the friggin' thing, and it, stuffing it full, and then trying to wheel a doggone thing out. And remember, they got caught. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. Samsung announced a new 110-inch TV that costs over $100,000 and has a solar-powered remote. Wow. Why are you even announcing that? What, for outdoor viewing? I mean, like, who who's lining up for this? True. Hey, it's $100,000. Bezos? Hey, thanks for letting me know. Mm-hmm. What kind of room do you need? I mean, where do you How put that How big is it again? 110 inches. It's for my theater. I mean, sure. I mean, people have houses big enough for it. But you let, do, but again, a hundred grand. And let me ask yeah. you this. Why do I need a solar-powered remote? My remote stays inside my home, I under my roof. Are you putting this outside? Right. <laughs> this makes no sense to have a solar-powered remote. That's just a flex that that doesn't even make sense. It really does. But if you're spending $100,000, you know, go ahead. Give me a gold-plated solar-powered Honey, remote. Honey, where's the remote? It's outside charging. <laughs> right. <laughs> really? That's convenient. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Are you ready, guys? Are you ready? Babycenter.com just released its report of the most popular baby names of 2020. Yay! Yeah! I know that you guys have been waiting on the Probably the the same. We've got it. So now let's run down the list as we do each and every year. Let's find out what those favorite baby names were. Let's start with the uh, the ladies. Give me the top 10 girl names that we have here for 2020. Any thoughts? Uh, Ava's always in the top ten. Ava, Ava Charlotte, Charlotte, Olivia. Olivia. Is Madeline still a big Madeline. one? Madeline. Okay. All right. So here you go. Here are your top ten. At number ten, Mia. Okay. Mia, Mia saw a resurgence there in 2020. I hope one day she, Mia becomes a mother. You can call her Mama Mia. <laughs> That's where my mind goes. Exactly. Right next to it, Amelia at number nine. Amelia. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't think I know either Amelia or a Amelia. I don't know. I know a Mia. I don't know an Amelia. Jesus. I know both. But I feel like the Mia I know is older than the Amelia. Okay. Okay. Number eight. Oh, wow. Alia? Alia? Alia. 
A A L I Y A H. Yeah, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. I do know one Aaliyah. You do know Aaliyah. I do know she's about ten. Yeah. Okay. All right. These are the most popular girl names of 2020. <laughs> you never seen the name Aaliyah? No. This oh, is the first man. time seeing it. A lot of A names. Number seven, Aria. Aria. Okay. All right. Aria, like the uh, like the Vegas hotel or an opera thing. Hmm. An Aria. Oh, I like it. Okay. That's better than Paris. Number six, Isabella. Isabella. I, I, right. I feel like I've known an Isabella in my life. I do one Isabella. like Renaissance names or something. A little bit. Of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, a little bit. Keep in mind, this is the Game of Thrones era. Right. People are still yeah, kind of yeah. hot exactly. on that show right now. These are the most popular baby girl names of 2020. Number five, Ava. Okay. Yep. AVA Ava. How does Ava always make the list? It's a good it name. It has for 10, uh, 10 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number Long. four, one of my favorites, Emma. Emma. Okay. I know a handful of Emmas, and they're great people. I don't think I've met a bad Emma yet. <laughs> Ain't no bad Emmas. No bad Emmas out here. No, they're always nice. Right. Number three of the most popular baby names of 2020 for girls, Riley. All right. Could be a dog. I think I've only known one female Riley in my life, and she's f- fantastic. I knew Love one. Her. She had four legs, and yes, she was, in fact, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> know any Riley's, Ted? Uh, only from porn. Oh, right. Oh, I know. He, yes. I know, I know that talking. Riley, too. <laughs> I know like, about. I was about to say yes, and I'm like, no, I don't know her yeah. in real life. I know of her. Fantastic actress. <laughs> number two, Olivia. Yeah, that's Olivia's always been on popular there. for a while. Mm-hmm. And this is the number one popular, the most popular girl name of 2020. Jeff. 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 Sophia. Oh, Sophia. Okay. okay. So people are huh. going back to the more old the, school uh, again, right? More the usual suspects. I know a couple Sophies, right but I don't think of Sophia. It changes every decade. So right now we're going back to the old school names, right? Mm-hmm. The Isabellas, the Avas, etc. Because before that, it was the Mackenzies and the, the more modern right. names. Right. We're going to see a lot of old names come back, like Agnes and stuff. I don't know Maybe that Agnes on which is going to come back. Mona. That's kind of the weird thing about this year is pop culture-wise. Right. There weren't as many opportunities for popular movies. Right. I mean, popular right, right. TV shows, Oh, man, sure. so that means Joe's making a comeback. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Carol. Yeah. Joe. Ah, no. All right, time for the most popular boy names of 2020. At Thrill. T- Thrill, okay. Miles, any guesses? I bet you Miles is on. Uh, I'm starting to meet a like, lot of young Mileses. Really? Is he young still Miles? not like Austin and Hunter and Okay, Ted, any guesses? <sighs> trying to think. It's not, oh, he already took Austin and Hunter. You know, I'll throw a Lance in there. Lance, Ooh, I like okay. Lance. Lance. At number 10, the name that Miles can never seem to say right, uh, Mateo. 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 Or, or Mateo. Matt, is, Mateo. As he likes Mateo. to say. That's right. Mateo. Number, uh, number nine, Caden. I feel like we're seeing a, I am seeing a little bit of an influx of Caden. I feel like I've heard that name a lot more because frequently Because everyone lately. did Aiden and now, you know, but but I, I guess people just like the way it sounds because there was Jaden, Aiden, Caden. Mm-hmm. So now Caden's taking over. There you go. Mm-hmm. These are the most popular boy names of 2020. Number 8, Oliver. I don't know okay. that I've known a single Oliver in my life. I've known one. Yeah, I've got a cousin named Oliver. All right. I know two. You know two Olivers. Well, then I'll yeah. just sit here. We used to work with an head. Oliver. Oh god, that's right. Nice guy. Yeah. All right. Awesome dude. Number seven, Lucas. Okay. Lucas. I've known a couple Lucases. All right. It is both a... <clears throat> Again, these sound very Renaissance to me. Right. It sounds kind of a nerdy name or either that it's a dark name. Oh, Lucas it, is either a nerd or a dark lord. Well, I mean, if it goes by Luke, ah, probably fair. a jock if it's Lucas, right. Nerd or dark or dark lord. One of the <laughs> That's right. <laughs> these are the most popular boy names of 2020. Number six, Grayson. Yeah, I know Only some Grayson Graysons. I know is a cat. <laughs> I've, I've known two Graysons. I know one currently. Okay. Any Graysons in the house? All right. Number five, Elijah. Elijah? All right. I, I feel like something came out with an Elijah. Well, Elijah that, would. Elijah would, but he didn't really have any, that big of a comeback. There is something else where Elijah is the main character, I feel like. Okay. And I'm sure the textures are about to just let me know here. These are the most popular baby boy names of 2020. Number four, Aiden is still on the list. Yep. Aiden? All I know right. an Aiden. Good guy. Number three, Jackson. Jackson. Oh, oh cool. Jackson. I do too. Jackson. That's a cool name. It's a good name. Number two, Noah. Noah. Yeah, Noah's been there for a while, a couple years now. That's a biblical name that just keeps on moving, man. It really is. But it's not a bad name. Are there any Noahs out there that are boaters, that are fishermen? <laughs> they own a yacht. No. No, they're just, they're waiting. Noah has to they're own waiting. a yacht. Yeah. I got a big boat, man. <laughs> Yeah, if you lived in this area and your name was Noah, you'd be paranoid constantly. <laughs> <laughs> 40 days? 40 days? That's all you yeah, got, Rain? Got it. And this is the most popular baby boy name of 2020. Any final guesses? Josh. 
Liam. 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 That is still a good, Liam. strong name, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad name at all. Liam Neeson, great actor. He's holding up he that helps. name. He helps. He really does. He never plays a P. Liam right? Hemsworth? No. If he played oh. like uh, right. If he played like the role of Mr. Bean, I get the feeling, yeah, I like the name Liam. I'm just not going to do it. You know what? That's fair, Ted. But the problem is, is that I always think Liam Neeson when I see that word and not Liam Hemsworth. I'll start watching more romantic comedies. That's right. <laughs> he is the he's the inferior Liam, in my opinion. <laughs> the inferior. <laughs> Look, man, it's against Liam Neeson. Sorry. Worst I Hollywood with Liam. <laughs> Back to some good news stories here. A man in India cashed his life savings of $70,000 and used it to set up a free 24-hour food pantry. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. That's, That's very cool. cool. Life savings. A preschool teacher that lost his job during the pandemic just hit the lottery for $250,000. Good, awesome. man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. A woman in Philadelphia handed $100 cash cards to restaurants all around town and got another $18,000 donated to her cause after people saw what she was doing. Damn. Damn. Shared online that that's, she was that she was doing all this, and they were like, you know what? Yeah, we'll pitch him for that too. An eighteen thousand dollars later. That's a great idea. We got uh, for our uh, holiday. Uh, we didn't have a party or anything. Right. Well, yeah, sure. Well, what the company did do was give back to the community, and if you live in a certain area, they gave you a list of like six restaurants where you live locally, and then they buy a gift certificate for you. Right. Nice. So hell yeah. I mean, I, that's that's awesome. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's that's a great idea. If you can, if you, that helps out the local restaurants. That's it. They need it right man. now. So 100%. gift card to one of those places is great. A man in Philadelphia is making pizza, and instead of people paying for them, he's asking that they donate money to charity, and he's already raised more than thirty thousand dollars. So Does he, he own a pizza shop, or is he just making the pizza? He's making them out of him out of his home, and he's like on the second story out of an apartment, and so he actually has a winch that he lowers them down to people free of charge. and just asks that they make a donation to to the charity, and I don't know if he's got a bucket that he goes to his own charity, or if he just asks them to go online and donate. But that's how he's collecting. Hey, yeah. I'll take a free pizza. That's awesome. Amen to that, man. Amen to that. Uh, it would seem that Final Destination has just about played out in Florida. It has. How's that? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are on the way one hour from now. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile. This will take caller 9 at 206-421-ROCK. All right, and we made it to drinking time. New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's Impossible Escapes Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org.